Canadians are bracing for massive mortgage payments, as half of all mortgages in the country are set to renew in 2025 and 2026. And because I'm committed to more than just getting my clients into houses that they want, it's now my time to make sure that the word is out to everyone with a mortgage, that they had better start taking action to make sure that they can stay in their homes. And in this video, I'm going to share with you exactly what I think you should do today if you are looking at a mortgage rate renewal in the coming couple of years. And then my friend, Canadian mortgage and finance YouTuber Nolan Mathias will show you how you can amplify that tactic to maximize its results. But I couldn't possibly share that until I ask you to subscribe if you would like to stay up to date on Canadian real estate. And if you think it's about time that other Canadians start becoming financially responsible go ahead and click the like button for the YouTube algorithm so your fellow country men and women can see this video. And hopefully if enough Canucks watch this, we can save the economy from its looming demise. And of course, if you are stretched too thin due to these new higher for longer interest rates, and you are considering selling your home in my market of Surrey, BC, or anywhere in the Fraser Valley, you can book a call with me to get your home sold before you start missing payments. Because some people are going to start missing payments. But I don't think most of them are. And what I am going to share with you in today's video first aired on this channel during a live stream about a week ago. When I was joined by fellow Canadian YouTuber in the mortgage and finance space, my good friend, Nolan Mathias. You see, about once each month on the channel, I am hosting live streams. Sometimes with a guest like Nolan or in the past, my friend Tom Story, and sometimes on my own to discuss the market and also allow for answers to your questions in the live chat. So keep an eye out for more of those in the future. And if you like what you see in the rest of this video and you wanna go back and watch the entire hour and a half long live stream, I'll make sure to link it at the end of this video. Now let's jump into the clip about what Canadians should be doing right now to try and minimize the inevitable pain of higher mortgage payments the next time their payment terms renew. So my big concern is the people that got the 2020, like mid 2020, late 2020 mortgages are going to be the first ones that have to renew into higher rates. And if rates don't come down before them, those people are going to feel a ton of pain. Yeah. And it's going to be their pain that causes, if they find, if they feel that pain that causes rates to come down, and then it's going to be like the 2021, 2022 buyers that end up with slightly lower interest rates because they just happen to be in the right timing in the cycle. But mm -hmm. if I'm like that 2020 buyer and I've got any kind of mortgage that's not adjustable rate and I haven't already felt the pain, I'd be doing everything I can to prepare for, for what could come and hope that it doesn't. Yeah. And because in 20, beginning of 2020, no, sorry, in beginning of 2021, so this is going to be the, what, then 26 renewals. That was the really, really low uh, point, right? Like the 1.49% five-year fixed. Yeah. Because right when the old pandy hit, it was still a fair bit higher, mm -hmm. right? So then we have the 2021 people are who I'm worried about. So let's say you bought January, February, or completed January, February of 21 at 1.49%. And since then you've put your head in the sand and you're making your $2,700 a month payments and you were qualified. Now, remember the stress test was smaller then. it was four, seven, five. So those people could be in trouble, but I'm reaching out to those clients of mine. And I'm saying, listen, you need to take a look. And a lot of them are ignoring me. A lot of them but you need to take a look at what your payment would look like at 6.5 because what you should probably do right now is you can afford 100% right now, you can afford 4.75% because that's where you were stress tested at. Yep, totally. So, so you should increase your payment as if it's 4.75. And then when you're, uh, if you can increase your payment, which I found out my mortgage, I can't do that. So I have to lump sum only. What? Yeah, can you believe it? Manual life, you bastards. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I found it out. Um, I no, wanted to increase don't. increase my payments. It wouldn't let me. But increase to 475 now, and then you've still got now, what are we, 23. So you're going to renew in 26. So you've got two, a couple of years anyway, two and a half years maybe, of 
not being in a, like, you're going to be hurting, but you're going to hammer down your mortgage. You're going to hammer down your principal like crazy. And then I'm hoping at that time, maybe we can get to a five and a half percent rate. Your payment still goes up again, should you choose to keep that, or you re-amortize out and get it back down to your now comfortable amount. Can I, can I uh, make a suggestion on a little tweak to that, that I would, I would do, I would, instead of increasing your payment, I would be taking that money and I would be putting it into some sort of money market fund or some sort of bond that lines up with your renewal date. And the reason why is because yeah. I, I genuinely believe it's better to have cash on hand than it is to uh, be paying down your mortgage faster, especially in times like this. So if, if somebody doesn't have cash on hand, but they want to prepare, don't increase your payments, put the money aside, make sure it's in some vehicle that's getting at least the interest rate that you would be uh, paying right now and just have it accumulate until you get to that point. And is this the is compounding especially... mortgage pay down, not a benefit though, you think right now? Well, money always grows faster than it saves. So if you have a, if you have a loan that has a 5% interest rate and you have a investment that has a 5% interest rate, you'll actually you'll actually make more money at 5% than you'll save by paying off the debt. Now, if and if you do this in a TFSA, it's completely tax-free, so everything's equal. The only the only time where it might be beneficial to pay the debt down is if you didn't have tax-free savings available, in which case you have to there's a tax implication on on the growth and and that throws the numbers off, but if like if but nobody's save, saving more than that 80 grand or whatever is in your TFSA right now. No. But I guess we should then stress that has to be a guaranteed investment. That has to be, you, I mean, you're not going to buy in bank stock with that right now because your bank stock could half. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that has to be a GIC or a bond or something. And it has to line up for when your renewal comes. Yeah. And, and probably want to get some professional advice on that because for example, if you buy a two-year bond right now, you want to make sure it's a two-year bond and not a five-year bond you're buying on the open market because you want it to come up um, for renewal, for lack of a better word, like, on that date so that you're getting all of your funds back. Well, there you have it. Let me know if you think increasing your payments now is the best option or if you think saving those payments for a future renewal as Nolan explained, is the better option. And of course, if you are already feeling the pain and don't know if you can make it to your future renewal, maybe because you didn't choose a fixed rate product at all and you're already feeling the pain of a variable product, well, then you can book a call with me using the link in the description below to discover if selling or holding on is the right option for you. Thank you so much for subscribing, clicking the like button, and check out the entire live stream by clicking right here.